Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing great this Wednesday morning, this middle of the week. Of course, like usual, I have my cup of coffee with you, with me this morning. Maybe you have yours, too, as we check in this midweek check in. We call it Coffee with PC. And so I'm thrilled that those of you who are out there are going to spend a few minutes with me. Uh, obviously, you see I brought an orchid today. Um, we don't have very many of these. I guess it's the time of year where they're blooming. These are, are, are just remarkable and beautiful plants. Uh, I know many of you probably have them in your yards or greenhouses. We're in, a, in an incredible part of the world in that they do really well here. The climate sort of fits them. Uh, but, but in that vein, the amazing thing to me is we don't really think about the orchids we have. We kind of, be honest, we just kind of ignore them. And then they bloom. It, it's the craziest thing, you know. We we have them uh, somewhat in the house when they bloom. We take them outside, you know. We don't really think about watering them too much or caring for them too much. And then the right time of year, just like this one, uh, they bloom. But this one is really unique, and I, I hope you can see it. And the reason I brought it, Denise used this Sunday night with our teens and her lesson with them. And, and when she was talking about it, you know, I said, wow, that's a really cool lesson. Obviously, we've got two stalks of blooms, but you can see this one particularly is bent over. Um, this is part of the main stalk, but this stem here with all of these blooms, uh, it, it's a broken part of the stem right here. It, that's why it juts out at kind of a right angle there. I don't know how long it's going to last um, but but it's amazing when she saw that and when she pointed it out that, that this one is still full of flowers. Uh, you know, it's still there in spite of what is a pretty tenuous connection with the main part of the flower. Uh, that That's pretty amazing to me. And, and it reminded her and it reminds me of what Jesus says in John chapter 15. It's the vine and the branches uh, passage and and you may be familiar with it where Jesus says I'm the true vine my father is the gardener uh, he says in verse 5 I am the vine and you are the branches um, this idea that that Jesus is the source from which we as Christians grow and he goes on and says if you remain in me and I in you you will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing if you not remain in me you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers and he goes on and 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 so it's it's a pretty straightforward uh, agricultural analogy Jesus uh, in that day and time was in an agricultural society uh, and so these analogies would be you know right up the alley of his ears and he uses this vine and branches in this case we've got the orchid with the main stem and the branches in these case the flower spikes that that come off of it uh, and like he says, if, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Well, the fruit of an orchid, uh, particularly in this regard, are, are all of these blooms. This is this bloom is evidence of health, of, of nourishment, getting to the various branches that allow it to bloom. Now, I'm sure there might be uh, other fruit or, or, or seed pods that come up. I don't really know my uh, my orchids, my... my uh, particulars about this. I guess Tillman and Pat or, or maybe Miss Nora or some of the others in our church could give me quite the education that are into plants and know it, but this would be what we look for, that sort of production, that fruit. And you can see this is pretty productive. But but again, back to this broken branch. You know, when we read this, and we talk about this this John 15 passage about if you remain in Jesus and he remains in you. Uh, you know, we, we think of that and we talk about different ways we can remain or abide is another translation. We stay connected to the vine that is Jesus. We talk about things like um, reading and studying the scriptures, the Bible, God's word. We talk about staying connected to him through prayer. We talk about the reality of the greater body of Christ we call the church, staying connected to that group and the other believers in him and the, the, the encouragement we get and the growth that can come from all of those things. But I like this vine as a, or this plant as a reminder because, you know, sometimes we may feel a little like this one branch that's, that's here that's, that's broken off. It's not hanging on by very much. That connection uh, can we say that connection of this branch to the main plant is not very secure? It's not very good. But 
there's still a connection. It's still there bearing fruit. And, and I'm encouraged by this because there are times when in my life uh, and have been and maybe in your life where you you don't feel like you're all that connected. Maybe it's it's the stress of life, the, the demands that are being placed on your life, the, the circumstances with which you are dealing uh, that, that sort of make that connection feel less than strong. Uh, you feel like, as we say, I'm, I'm hanging on by a thread. Maybe if you, I don't, again, I don't know how well the camera's catching just that little bit of connection, but there's not much that's connecting this branch full of blooms to the main stem but it's still connected. And as long as it's connected, things can flow and life can come. And that's the same for us. And maybe it's especially encouraging for me and for you to know that, that you know, yeah, uh, the desire would be that perfect, healthy, strong connection to the vine that, that we all would say is desire, that we all would say we would want of our relationship with God. But there are times when it's just not the case. And, and yet, even then, God can work through us. You know, it, it says specifically, apart from me, you can do nothing. If I were to go ahead and, and finish breaking this off so that this stem was apart from the breast of the plant with, with the root system, with the delivery of nutrients that, that come from the larger plant and the pot and all that goes in it, uh, these little blooms, they would, they would stay for a short time, but eventually they would fade and they would fall off. But this, this particular stem, apart from the main tree or, or, or plant, it's not going to bear any more blooms. It, it's done. Unless there's some magic thing about orchids, I don't know. I know you can take a, a gumbo limbo branch and stick it in the ground and it'll root and grow. But if you just toss that aside, that's it, right? The, the fruitfulness is lost because the connection is lost. But as long as it's got even this tiny, tenuous, less than perfect connection, there's enough to allow it to bear fruit. I'm, I'm thankful that, that my fruit bearing is more dependent on what God can do through me than how much I'm responsible for. You know, that, that should be a, a kind of a foundational tenet of our life in Christ. That, that we all, yeah, we all have different abilities, strengths. We all have different desires and, and levels of discipline, particularly as it relates to maybe spiritual things. But you could be the absolutely most knowledgeable person, the absolutely most disciplined person, the absolutely most I don't know what person. And if you're not connected to the vine, all of that discipline, all of that knowledge is meaningless. If you don't abide in Christ, it's, it's worthless. It's only as we are connected, as we are abiding, as we are uh, remaining, as this passage, the NIV translates it, in him, that we're able to bear much fruit. So, so I, I'm, I'm encouraged by our orchid plant that we just brought in when it bloomed, especially as, as Denise pointed out, this, this rather uh, less than perfect connection. I'm glad that even when my connection, if I feel like I'm just holding on to Jesus by the barest of, of ways and in the barest of places, his life, his power, his love, his grace, his mercy can flow through me and there can be fruitfulness in my life. That, that's the goal of this whole passage, that we would bear fruit. His character would be formed in us, the fruit of the Spirit, and, and, and then even the reproductive aspect of bearing fruit, that we could be used to demonstrate God's character and God's love and God's grace to others. Uh, it, is a, it is a remarkable thing that God uses us as human beings, as imperfect as we are, as much as we mess up, as much as we fail Him, God still uses us. Again, it's not dependent on us. It's dependent on that connection to Jesus and his power working through us. So, so I wanted to share that with you. When Denise pointed it out, I just thought that was, for me, just like, wow, that's a very cool thing. Uh, like I said, we shared it with our teenagers. She shared it with the teenagers on Sunday night. So I thought I'd pass that along to you today, that God desires that we be fruitful. And, and, and we, we're told, you know, you've got to do this and this and this and this and this, and then, then God will be happy with you. know, John 15 and other passages in Scripture boil it down. What we need to do is stay connected. That's our goal. 
We don't have to think, I need to bear fruit, I need to bear fruit, I need to bear fruit, I need to know. We just need to stay connected to the vine because the vine is, is the source of nutrient power. If we remain in him and he in us, we will bear much fruit. And so that's my encouragement to you. Find ways, even if it's just holding on by a thread, depending on where you are and what you're going through in your life. That, that's my encouragement to you. No matter what you're going through in your life, stay connected to the vine. Stay, remain, abide in Jesus. Even if you feel like you're holding on by the literal or proverbial thread, don't let that go because that's all it takes for his power, his grace, his love to flow through you and use you and to make you fruitful for his kingdom. So those are my thoughts this Wednesday morning. I'm going to head back inside. It's kind of breezy. I hope the audio is not too horrible. Sometimes when it's breezy, it's kind of bad. I hope that came through. And I hope you can see this connection. And I hope you'll be encouraged today to remain, to abide in Jesus. It's not about your abilities. It's about what he can do through you. That's why we get together. That's why we join together as a church for that encouragement that we can have. And I, I hope that you'll take advantage of that one way to remain or to abide in Christ by being a part of of a church family, of worship, of study together, of prayer together. All of that's offered. Certainly our main service, Sundays, 9 a.m. Love to have you join us. We're going through the book of Acts together. I think learning a lot from that. And, and if you can join us this weekend, whether in person, we'll be here. Or if you want to jump online, we stream our services just like we're streaming this Coffee with PC chat. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head inside. I'm going to take my cup of coffee. I'm going to get this this plant. The wind today is also not just the audio, but I'm worried about this plant. I don't want the, the wind to catch it wrong and knock it over or break that last little tenuous bit. So I'm going to take it on inside and I'm going to leave you with the rest of your Wednesday, wishing you the best this Wednesday and hope to see you maybe in worship with us on Sunday. Have a great week, everybody.